unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Isaiah 49, I want to share something very simple. Let's read from the verses 14. The Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Read it again. Hmm. Read it again. Mm -hmm. The Lord has forsaken me. Give me the amplifier. Uh huh. I want you to read it. One, let's go. Zion, Jerusalem, her people have seen in captivity say, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Give me the message. The Zion, don't get it. God has blessed me. My master has forgiven me. I even exist. When you go back to the Amplified, you realize, he says, but Zion, which is Jerusalem, her people are seen in captivity. Okay? But Zion, Jerusalem, comma, her people are seen and seen in captivity. And they say, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. They went into a place of captivity. And when they went into a place of captivity, they say it seems God has what? Forsaken me. And he has what? Forgotten me. You get it? Why? Because situations around them were happening in a certain way. Praise the Lord. Situations around them were happening in a certain way. You can get through a situation and you say, oh, what God has what? Forsaken me. And my Lord has what? Forgotten me. Probably some of you, you were born with spoons in your mouth. Everything was okay. You went to the best school, best university, best everything. Because now everything happened the way. You get it? When I'm going to change it, you get my point. What is sadness is not sadness. You get my point. What is trial is not trial. What is tribulation is not what? Tribulation. Somebody gave a story of a young girl. Well, when she came to a certain lady crying, I think her husband had left her. It was a story, something like that. So the old woman called the young girl and said, Young. So she took her in the backyard. And she asked her, How many graveyards are in? They were close to about 10 or 11. She said, All of these are my children and they all died. So let's go back in the house. <laughs> Who understands what I'm saying? <laughs> but the Bible says the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. You understand? Analog people can't understand that when we say that we have problems. They say, what? You have problems, you don't have transport. I mean, these guys used to walk to school every day. For you, there was just one car day you didn't have transport and you made it a big deal. I'm not talking about those protestations. Wind is no longer my friend. Praise the Lord. These people were in captivity. So I'm not talking about just being abused by a neighbor and then you say, aha. Now I'm what? Hey God, I'm, have you forsaken me? Why is my neighbor abusing me? You know, there's some people who snap very quickly and they have the impression that because they also have their own degree of trouble, because we understand. Here I'm talking about a whole nation being taken to captivity. The houses they are building are not theirs. 
the hospitals they are building are not there, the schools they are building are not there, even the household under which they live, they don't have certain rights and privileges. And they've lived like that and raised children. Your child is growing up, but you know, as soon as he gets of age, he's going to become a slave. You get it? And you yearn to go back to your own home and country. You see, I tell Christians every day, we don't know the price of freedom. That's why many people can act the way they want. They act. Because we don't know the price of freedom. That's why some people pray the way they want, they read the Bible the way they want, because they don't know the price of giving opportunity to somebody to read the Bible. You get it? We were in China and you're preaching, waiting for arrest. You get it? You're preaching, but any time you're getting arrested and deported, you don't know how. Any time they will arrest you, you're preaching, eh? but guys are always on the door like this waiting, because anything can happen. We used to rent rooms of, you know, those long, tall hotels, eh? You get like a top floor, you, get, you guys rent a room, a man and a woman. And they say, oh, me and my wife want to have a night there. And then the next thing you know, guys go up the same room and you enter a room, you find like the 20 Chinese, they're seated on chairs like this, they just want to hear the gospel. Do you understand? They are squeezed. But all of them are hungry for what? For God. Because we don't know the price of freedom. You get my point? Thank you, Lord. Because how could we have seen power without a persecuted church, 80% Christian? First lady is Christian. The president fears God. You understand? Freedom of what? Worship. You understand? And you know what we sell out of the country? 80% Christian. We can pray any day we want. We can scream any day we want to scream. We can do anything we want to do. You understand? That is why some guys don't want a man of God to live. Because they're saying this freedom, this freedom. They lived in a means era. They know what it means to pray when you're not praying. Do you understand? Eh? They know what it means to pray when you're not what? Praying. You're praying but you're... Shilelema. Shilelema. There is a man of God who was telling a story one time. There were in a group of about six guys. And then they were praying and then many guys came to kill them. You get it? Because, so they say that in the Amin regime, to be so deep was trouble. You get it? You can die any time because you're deep. You get it? Eh? So he said they were praying and then these guys come with guns to shoot them. The guy was saying, well, during that time, the understanding of prayer was different. You know how our generation, Father, we thank you for the ice cream. Did you play again the last week? You're holy. You're wonderful. I got a new bag. Thank you, Lord. You understand? You see how we are praying? So the guy was saying that the way they were praying was what? Different. And he gives the expression and says that they saw guys approaching, and they said, it's your God. You know, it's one thing when everything is okay for somebody to say, yes, I love God, what? Jesus is faithful. Have you ever been in a place where you're encouraging people and then you get into a situation and you forget every word you ever said about encouraging? Then you say, but I use these words every day. And the day you get into a situation, they don't make sense. But when you see another person in trouble, do you know that some people who are so good at encouraging, eh? you come with a problem and they ah, now what problem is that? Then you hear the next morning the guy committed suicide. Are you with me? <laughs> like, but this dude was encouraging. Maybe he was encouraging under gift, not experience. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Not what? Not experience. He was encouraging from gift. You know some people they are gifted to what? They can tell you, ah, ah, how can you commit suicide? <laughs> then you say, ah, no, this guy must be right. The way they talk, they are so political. You understand it? Why you think? Somebody can encourage. And then you get into a situation tomorrow and the same one. You get it? 
are brought to you and they don't make sense. Do you understand? They don't work. But there was a time they preached it in a sermon. You even brought money. You claimed the scripture and then you went back to sleep because it looked so deep. It was making sense. Do you understand? Then you get into a situation. And what was deep mystery, thank you Papa for the message, is the same thing somebody puts splashes on your phone and chua. That is why the Bible sometimes says mourn with those who are mourning. Don't throw mystery. As in, some people just want to throw a mystery. Somebody has lost their cousin who holds things up for. Wait a minute. Say it when they fired me off a job. Do you understand? Somebody has lost their what? Loved one and you said, all things work for. And by the way, it is true. But at that particular point, you do understand what I'm saying. If all things work for good, let them see them later. Okay? Or probably give that kind of counseling to somebody who has lost a job. A job is coward. But somebody has lost their loved one. But all things. All things. Uh-uh. Mourn with her. Or you. You get what I'm coming from? You know, sometimes that's how the gospel is. It, it might not make sense, but it still stays the gospel. It, up to today, I might never understand why God put that scripture. Romans 8.28 in the Bible. But I can tell you for a fact that even me there are some things and I ask, and I hear God, how do they work for God? And then sometimes you have to just say, okay, all things what? Work for good. You get what I mean? That is why there are times when we preach the gospel from a mind level. You write notes from a mind level. You can so see of the depth from a mind level without experience. And sometimes there are words in the scriptures you can look at and they seem like they are obviously as straightforward as they are, and you might never have the understanding of the meaning of those words. Now I've grown up to understand this. Some of the things that we read in the scriptures, we really don't carry the experience of those things. The word of God is supposed to give you access to experience everything you read. If you don't experience everything we read, you will miss out on one of the most intricate details of the relationship we cover with God, and that is feeling after. And that's what the Bible says, that he has made of all blood one nation. The Bible says of all men, for the, to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, comma, if happily they might feel after him, comma, and find him, though he be not found. There is nothing in the spirit realm that you need that is not from you. But God has a problem of a man who wants to find stuff in the spirit when they don't feel after God. I don't know that you understand. The Bible says that they should seek him, comma, if happily they might feel after him, comma, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Listen, God has a problem with trying to be found by men who don't feel after him. Because when you find a God who you don't feel after, everything that you receive from him and experience with him is carnal and selfish and fleshly. It can't have the benefit of divine purpose. Some people say, how can I find God? Simple. Seek a feeling after. Kind of experience. When you feel after. For example, when the Bible says, when Jesus moved his compassion, he healed. Okay? When a man has a healing gift without compassion, he can abuse it and dissipate the spirit. Why? Because he has a gift that is not attached to the feeling of God. Why does God heal people? God heals people because he has compassion over them. God heals people because he loves them. You remember that song we used to say, God loves people more than anything. Uh -huh. 
So there is that compassion he has over them. And he sees them in distress and trouble and disease and bondage and he says, no, I must get this one out. Then you find a man with a healing anointing without it. You get it? And then he says that if you want healing, bring this amount of money. You get it? Do you understand? But what he has was freely given. He was freely given. There is a mind in God where we must seek Him at a place where we feel after Him. That when we find a God, though He be not far, He is the God we find and we feel after. Do you understand? That is why the gospel is a feel after. Every portion of the gospel must carry an experience thereof. You must be sensitive. You see, when the Bible says, you might feel after. In other words, there is a godly feeling. Or, there is a feeling in God. One time I had an experience, so I was carried in the spirit, and the Lord said one day, I want to make you feel, listen to this word, how I feel about lost souls. Oh my God. Oh my God. I pray some of you, the day you feel it, eh? You're in a place where people can understand that it is God doing it to you. Because even the people who were there didn't understand. They looked at grace. Grace was another guy. I died. You get it? You know there are some experiences that are better when they're happening. Some people don't watch. Because if they watch, they can think. Don't worry, I wasn't, you know, acting weird or right. No. There is a way I felt. Have you ever felt like a consuming fire, it's not consuming you, but it is burning. Some of you think you understand, but you don't understand it. Because even the thought of it now makes my soul shine. It's the most sensitive, most painful, most sentimental feeling I have ever had. That's why when they make all that calls, there's the way I feel you. You get it? It's the way I feel inside because that pain comes back. You see, you can never explain to somebody how God feels about souls. That's why the Bible says that the heavens celebrate over one thing. When somebody crosses over, there is jubilation in heaven. Why? Because it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. That is why the greatest miracle is salvation. It's not lemon walking. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. See, a guy can sell him and go to heaven. But it's another when a man goes to hell with both legs. I wonder whether some people understand how serious this is. It's another thing when a man goes to hell and he was seated next to you and you laugh with him every day. That is why me now, everybody who lives around me, I try to reach out. Because it's a feel it's no longer duty. But I can be very easy to get it. Dr. Baba Nine with Hunter is the moment to get it. No, it has to be a feeling. That's why sometimes you have to pray for God to give you feeling. Because you see, look at people who are in a mild situation and they don't feel. Because I'm married, you never get a message. You're a spouse to Christ. You get it? You're a spouse to Christ. So it's the way you're supposed to be feeling. That's why. Sometimes people are not going to get results because even the way they worship God and praise Him, they are not in a relationship. No. Okay. They have something that is like a relationship, but it's not a what? A relationship. It's not a relationship. That's why I give the example of love relationships. Somebody talks from midnight up to 3 a.m. When I go back to school, wait, the back is out. You charge your some time. No, 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 no. You understand it? Midnight, one, two, 
three, four. Then somebody sleeps. Then in the morning, watch them overnight. <laughs> Feeling. This is not even love. It is infatuation. It can die the next two months. You understand? Try to say, hey God, I should feel like that. You understand what I'm saying? I should talk to you like we are judging. You understand? And then somebody tells me, you guys, you're not stopping. Wait, because it's not deep. No, it's love relationship. I realize, you know, we had a problem. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. I have to even start asking, am I your sheep? Because man of God. How can somebody just call him? English people call them sweet what? Nothing. But this God is sweet something. And if you're here and you can't pray for more than an hour, eh? you know that some people can't pray for more than an hour. Two minutes, Father, thank you. Thank you. I have been there. One time I went for an overnight. The first time I went for a serious overnight, the rest of them were just praying. <laughs> Father, I thank you. You're wonderful. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Ten minutes. Fifteen minutes. Hey, you are now the time. I'm very to you. <laughs> right, this watch is the one which is not working. It's the one o'clock. Then some guy passes. Then you follow him. <laughs> And he said, maybe this guy has something on him. One man of God had a back problem. <laughs> and used to pray like, Shemele Baba. Man. We also found our own start in our back. Mashatala Baba. The guy just testified later. Kumbe, the guy was walking on his back. I saw boys praying. Like they are role models. When he finds a guy who just takes, he has to find another guy. There was a time in Kawenta we got another group of guys. My God! There used to be a dude who used to pray. But he used to have a certain rare kind of song. He said, Bwah, bwah, bwah. And he would do that from 10 p.m. up to 6 a.m. non stop. Bwah, bwah. That's why when I look at some of you, I realize many of you are, honestly, you don't know how to pray. That's the truth. They really don't know. You find a guy in a corner, and you think it's going to stop. One, two, three, four, six, seven, seven, they even close with a sound. And you're like, wow. So me, I did only like 20 minutes started. Then I said, the wife first go call in the village. I went on my uncle's, their wives, then all their sons, I finished them on daddy's side. Then I went on mommy's side, I went on all of them. Then I said, but really, how can I not be a generous Christian? Let me then enter my friends. I prayed for all my friends, Sam, who was, the PC, what? You understand? I went there. After everything, brethren, by 35 minutes, I was done. The night was still young. Just about 11 p.m. Apostle Christ's prayers are over. The guys who are as though they are just beginning to sit They are just starting. I watched guys pray. Eh? I watched guys pray. Now over the years I realized some of them were not in a relationship. But they knew how to pray. You know, eh? you might be a person who doesn't feel up. But I've realized one thing. Selfishness can make a man pray the whole night. Simon the sorcerer was ready to give any amount of money to get the anointing that was on the apostles. You would take it for a giver. But he wasn't a giver. But you see, some of them, it was not a fill up. It was the selfishness of getting an anointing and the desperacy 
to give everything. Give me the version of that. He says, and when Simon saw the apostles by merely laying on of hands confront the spirit, he pulled out his money. Excited. And he told me, tell me, Yoa. Show me how you did that. How much do you want? Name your price. Simon could have given any amount of money to receive something very simple because he saw that it was coming off another man's hand. And brethren, there are people who pray the whole night, but they are asking how much. There are people who can be in choir the whole evening, but they are asking how much. There are people who can serve every day and carry tears every day, but really they are saying how much. And what does the next verse say? The next verse says, Peter says, to hell with you and you alone. Why? That's why. Trying to what? Some people's prayers are buying. They're trying to buy the anointing. They're trying to buy the glory. Because they look at prayer as an experience of trying to buy and purchase what is supposed to be free. They lose the mind of God. The mind of God. Listen. The way God speaks. That's why I told you, me, I am not intimidated by a guy who prays the whole night. Because I pray and I can pray the whole night and I've done it before. But there was a time I didn't understand what I was doing. They don't really don't say, ah, yeah, intercessor. I pray like a whole month. Go up your mountain. Go up your mountain. Because I know a man who can feel up the board and pray for 15 minutes and the whole wind changes. If that man dares to pray for a whole night, something about him changes. Tell your neighbor learn to pray. Listen, there are people who used to pray the whole night and they both, some of them try to buy and they got some things. Are you hearing me? And some of them reap damnation. They are prayerful but they have not moved an inch in the spirit. Are you, are you getting where I'm coming from? But listen, when you tap the plate of the feeling of God, the next time you pray, every man's spirit will respond. Just touch that feeling. Touch the feeling of God. 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 When I got that thing, I would pray and people couldn't enter my room. So I know the philosopher and I know a man trying to buy. And that's why I said me. I'm not intimidated. When a guy says me, I've been praying for a holy man, man, the holy hour is praying. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, don't be mistaken. Every praying man has results. If they pray after a feeling, don't ever be deceived. Every praying man with a feeling, every praying man with a feeling has results. You read stories of all, even the people you think. The other day somebody was uh, giving a story of uh, Jesus Prince. And they were giving a story. His mother was saying that she could find this boy in the bathroom praying. And she could not understand the intensity by which her boy prayed and wanted God. You get it? So, some of just see this guy preaching and they think he just woke up in the morning, got the grace, and they just started preaching. <laughs> no man just makes it. No man. <laughs> Somehow they are pushed by God. Praise the Lord Jesus. But you see, we have to raise the Christianity of men who are praying for a fill of God. Not men who are trying to buy the gift. Not people who are me, me pray. You understand? All of these things, the person who prays because they need breakthrough, you're trying to buy. The person who prays because they want the anointing, you're trying to buy. The person who prays because they want glory, you're trying to buy. The person who prays the whole night because you want the healing anointing, darling, you're trying to buy. We never saw God for healing anointing. 
We saw God for who he was. The healing came. Seek God for who he is. They that come to him must know that he is. Firstly, he is. And then the reward. The reward comes, but you must know that he is God. Seek him because he's God. Pray because he's God. Trust because he's God. Listen, read the word because he's God. Commit your life because he's God. Yield to him because he's God. Give him time because he's God. He'll take you places you've never dreamed of. Why should dream because he's God? Don't pray because they say that if you don't pray, you will not get an angel. You're buying, Simon. You're buying, Simon. You're buying. You're buying. The first time I got that teaching of Simon the Sultan, I was in the bed sleeping. The Holy Spirit woke me up. Grace wake up. He said to tell me. Do you know Simon the Sultan? He started to explain. Because during that time in campus when I was learning to pray, I almost branched off to ask the price of what I wanted from God. He came in the night and woke me up. I didn't even know where the scripture was. He started explaining. When I opened the scripture, I am shocked that he narrated the whole story before I read it. That's why I take it so sensitive that I don't ever want to have a relationship with God where I'm thinking he should name his praise because that's legal. It's work, but it's not great. Are you hearing me? Seek God because of who he is. When the Bible says desire the best gift, he doesn't say pray for the best gift. Don't get it wrong. It's not wrong to say I desire healing anointing. Are you hearing me? And let me tell you, whatever you desire, when you fill up, you just make a sentence and the Lord hears. You don't need the whole night of prayer. You don't need the whole night of overnight. Simple. It's like the day I received the healing anointing. I remember that day. I was from Hospice, Africa. I was looking after people in palliative care. They were dying of cancer. And then I lost a very important person because people were dying every day. And I went under my father's mango tree. And I sat just outside because I love those places. Of, many times I love to sit alone. And I just sat next to my father's mango tree like this. And I said, God, give me a healing anointing because I don't want to see people die. And the Spirit of God says, I have given it to you. I went to take it. That was it. From that day I knew that when I lay hands on the sick, that's it. It was not something that I ra 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 ra. No. The spirit of revelation. Are you hearing me? I was in Gerenge, bathing in the room. And there was another man of God bathing like this. Are you hearing me? And then I threw a word to him. He started talking to me. I said, while I'm bathing, the voice says, Spirit of Revelation is yours from today. Period. I bathed quickly. You understand? <laughs> Why? Because I knew the business. I, the guy spoke. I made a statement that was just a straight statement. The guy picked it. And he said, today you've said something that is so deep. In fact, it, from that day on, it became part of the man's message. I just made one statement and it became his message forever. So he started to speak. You know like you make a random statement and then somebody picks it, okay? Because he had the spirit of revelation. He started to speak it and the Lord spoke to him that day that from today this is your message. Actually, a man's ministry that day was birth. When he was speaking, I had something in that man that I'd never had before and I said, God, I want it. Immediately, it came. Boop. That was it. Period. In fact, you know, for me, I said, Wachoto, used to be still every Wednesday. If you read all my, because those books are kept, you go through that list, you realize, people used to bring prayer requests to my, my job, I need a promotion, my cousin brother, what? They used to, used to have one sentence, I want to know God. Three words, I want to know God. So, that's it. I want to know God. Me, I never wanted anything except to know Him. Period. Because it's eternal life. To know the one true God and His only Son Jesus. Get into an overnight. 
us put away your simanya what stress. A guy refuses to seek God for who he is. He seeks God because of a crazy woman. You get it? You refuse to seek God for who he is. You start to seek him when your husband starts to beat you. Boah, boah. No guy why can't show that way. Me, there's a person I know that used to be funny. He tried to, what? They could not pray. The husband started sleeping. She started sleeping in the compound. Every night, so kololo, so kololo. I said, okay, big woman, big. You understand? Some of us thought that our marriage is in camp at second year. We started praying for our children. What? It was talking about that. So when we get there, no straight. Look at my husband. That's the truth. We prayed in second year, first year there. You understand? I don't need to pass the whole la 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 No, 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 we started it. But you see, what I'm trying to tell you here is this, that can't you just come in the presence of God for who He is? For who He is? Beholding His beauty and inquiring in His courts. That's the very thing that takes, I mean, when a man says one day in the house of the Lord, he has a certain feeling. Listen, I got to that feeling, eh? And the bus is sweating, and I want to jump out and run very quickly and be with my Lord. You get where I'm coming from? Later on, when I got this mystery, oh my God, I was enter that and just go prostrate. Wah! And I said, I missed you. I missed you, you guy. Oh, you, 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 you. You understand? Eh? And sometimes it will get up to seven. Eh? Hey, hey. I'm like, oh, my God. It's already seven. You understand? You're the one who says it. It's already seven. But then, and when you sit here, pray a person who takes your watch. You're not in a relationship. How come you don't check watches when you're watching service? They will start bullying you with a soap. <laughs> la tormenta. La killer. La hater. La madara. La envious. La jealous. La... Wait, how could I sit on a roof for two hours? And I'm good, good, get food, mm. take tea, I'm coming, you understand? You even want to respond to a biological function, but you can't use why, because I wish they put a commercial. I wish they put a commercial. Then they put a commercial, please don't push. You even don't push. Why? Because you are missing the love of your life, Telemundo. God suits that hunger. Are you hearing me? To bring prayer. You can also want to go for biological function, but you can't because you want to finish the time. You feel the sentence in the spirit is not over. Oh God, make us fall in love with you. There is no freedom like a man who is in love with God pray. There is no freedom like a man who is in love pray. One time I saw this guy seeking God, I said, you know in that time, I said, no God, please stop. With the way that the guy was praying, you see the love of prayer. What? For us our prayers are very comical and they are calculated. You like those guys who are who discourage words, fifty five seven hundred fifty thousand hundred fifty four hundred fifty six hundred fifty six hundred five hundred seventy seven hundred seventy five hundred eighty eight. You're sold off. You understand? You're like strange. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Be free. I say, be free. Fall in love with Jesus. Make them wake you up. Because you're too dead in prayer. Let them remind you it's lunch time. Let them remind you it's supper. Let them tell you it's breakfast. Why? Because your soul is God. Don't be too quick to leave the love of your life. You must feel up. I said you must feel up. You must feel up. Praise God Jesus Christ. You must feel up. Hallelujah. So at the time Israel thought they were forsaken, Isaiah 49. Huh? He says, next verse says, we amplified again. He says, can a woman, uh -huh. and the Lord answered, he says, can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet I will not 
forget you. Get it out of your head. He can't. Next verse says, for I have what? I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of thy hands of Zion. Your walls are continually before me. Come on. He tattooed you. He engraved you. imprinted inside his bones. The Bible says, each of my hands. When he looks here, he sees Apostle Grace. When he looks there, he says, your walls are continually before me. Don't bring problems in the present. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't bring problems in the present. Don't come for an overnight because the guy touched you. Don't come for an evening service because she's not talking to you. Don't seek God because you lost your crucial. Come on, somebody. Don't come in the presence of Almighty God because you're sick of cancer. We went through war and we chose never to tell any of you. But while in those wars, I could not help to think how many years you can say God is faithful and you never understand the faithfulness of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say God is faithful, He's faithful. So, even in those situations, you understand? I could even say, I trust your faithfulness. I never went to God to speak to Him about that situation. No! No, I went to God simply. One thing, I just wanted to know the period. Situations are nothing. My walls are continually before God. A woman can forget a child, which is very hard. Don't say, I cannot forget you. Even when you're in the hardest situation. Because for me, it's the time I pray most. Not because I want to come out, no. But because there's that peace that passes all understanding. It guards my heart and mind in Christ. And the next thing I know, I'm not in his presence because I have a problem, no. Or because I'm seeking a solution, no. I'm in his presence because he is the solution. I'm in his presence because I know that none of those things can be compared to the ultimate glory of carrying his presence. Let me tell you something. You hear people crying, you don't just do that. I didn't say cry. I didn't lay hands on them, no. But they something about a God that you need to know and feel up. You get it? That conviction comes with a certain level of glory and presence. Because God seeks with a compassion and the hardest feeling to prove his word through you. You get it? Nobody can look straight this kind of thing. Nobody. And every limit should know it's not the house. No. It's not the seven steps to make it happen. No. At that point you lose it because God doesn't work that way. It's the feeling up. It's the feeling up. Somebody raise your voice and speak to Jesus. Father, we thank you for your work. We thank you because you're ministering to us every day. We bless you for your faithfulness. We bless you for your love and mercy. We're honored to, to call you God and for you to call us your sons and brothers. We bless you for the day. Teach us to know you, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.